Um, can you explain how Faisal came to write Jai Jitya and how he wouldn't have actually you know, talked about his spiritual experiences but because he wrote these letters that were later published just need to describe that whole episode So Faisal had received correspondence from his very close friends uh, Gendi Singh, asking why and how he came to Gosiki and as a hukam of his friends of Gosik's, he, while in prison, wrote these letters about his own personal experiences. Uh, even when you read the book, you see that he's not doing so eagerly, he's doing so very reluctantly, and often he skips over very significant periods of his life. For example, he's uh, skipped over the details of many years of his incarceration, uh, and who knows what uh, amazing things might have happened there. But when uh, the controversy arose over uh, what is the Gurmantar, the Panch Khalsa Devan under Teja Singh Pasoria, they were claiming that Vahogur is uh, the Gurmantar. And further, they had claimed that Pai Sabranti Singh received the Gurmantar of Vahogur and achieved enlightenment, achieved darshan through meditation of uh, that Gurmantar. When that took place, then Pai Sab agreed that his experiences could be made public. Then he agreed that uh, the Darshan of Vaheguru through the Gurmantra of Vaheguru uh, could be made available to the Panth to clear any doubt of what Gurmantra is in the Panth. Uh, and because of Jail Jitian becoming public, I can think of so many Gursiks that have been inspired, including myself, uh, my journey towards Gursikhi was inspired in large part by uh, randomly picking up that book. But I can think of uh, many others, including my, uh, he was an older Gosi, he was my mentor, you could say, Pai Sabjik Das Singh, who himself read Jail Jitin. And he used to tell all of us youngsters that if you want to understand Gosiki, if you want to be inspired towards Gosiki, then the book you need to read at a regular uh, interval, not just once, but regularly, is Pai Sab's Jyotiti. So, can you tell us about Pai Sab meeting with Bhagat Singh and um, why do you think this meeting is never really discussed in the mainstream Indian media, like in films and in history and stuff? When Pai Sab was held in Lahore jail, before he was to be released. He had uh, called up a favor uh, from one of the prison officials and that favor was that he wanted to meet uh, Bhagat Singh. And Bhagat Singh had, had expressed a desire to meet with Pai Sahib as well. And what took place in that meeting was Pai Sahib saw him as uh, a Sikh who had cut his hair and he asked him why it had happened. And Bhagat Singh's reasoning was that his Indian compatriots, his non-Sikh compatriots, uh, found it better this way, that he got more attention this way. Uh, but he then admitted that he doesn't believe in God anyways. And through his conversation with Faisal, uh, he realized that there is something more. That he regained his faith in God, and he agreed to keep his hair. And it's recorded that the Granthi that performed Bhagat Singh's last rites saw that he had six inches of hair on his head, so he did keep his hair. Why that meeting isn't covered by the Indian mainstream is because uh, what Bhagat Singh stood for has been subverted by uh, the Indian mainstream. Bhagat Singh did not dream of an India as it stands today. His dream of India was uh, completely different. It was a place of egalitarianism. It was, in fact, inspired by his Sikh background the equality that Sikhi preaches was something that was uh, really uh, inspirational to him, even if he didn't recognize it. So the image of Bhagat Singh with a hat and a mustache is something that sits easier uh, with the Indian mainstream, as opposed to a Bhagat Singh who at the very end of his life recognized the importance uh, and the existence of God and who died as a believing Sikh. All of this would complicate uh, the current narrative that surrounds his life. And uh, lastly, um, well, 
not lastly, but um, can you talk about um, the books of Bhai Sahib and how that's left a legacy for Gurusikhs and you know and Sikhi and people can learn so much about that. Can you just talk about his books and how they've been inspiration to you? Bhai Sahib's books are a treasure of Gursikhi. He was a prolific writer and so many issues he covered in his books. I'm from time to time asked to speak at camps and asked to talk about Gursikhi. And the first place I turned before uh, preparing for my lecture is Pai Sahib's books. Because everything he's written is based on Gurbani. That every single point he makes is an exposition of a Shabd. It's nothing that comes from his own mat. And as I understand it, he would listen to Guru Granth Sahib before uh, writing any book and he would take notes from the part and he would then write the book afterwards. But reading something from someone who has had the vision of Vaigur, who has had that actual spiritual experience, it's very different than reading something from uh, someone who's taking an academic approach. But Paisal's books are, I would say, a neglected treasure in our path today. A lot of people know who Pai Veer Singh is, but they don't know who Pai Sabranti Singh is and they're not familiar with his works. Uh, there have been some attempts to translate his works, uh, which are good efforts, but I think a lot more work needs to be done uh, to make it accessible. But you will not find an exposition of Tat Gurmat of that level anywhere else except Pai Sabranti books. Uh, so for me, if I have questions on Gursikhi, uh, Pai Gurdas's works are very important. Uh, but after that, if I can look to a Gursikh uh, who has really understood Gursikhi and can explain it, it's by some of these things. Okay. And lastly, I just want to talk about how the Akhani Data was formed at Baisab's time, and just a little bit about it today. I mean, today obviously we you know it's a bit, um, you know, fractured, but can you just talk a bit about that? So the things around Pai Sabrati Singh were referred to as the Nirban Kirtani Jatha or as the Akhan Kirtani Jatha. And that Akhan Kirtani Jatha was known for being lovers of Gurbani, for being Ashiks of Kirtan and Akhan Parsavs. And that group has now grown. That has now become an international group. And when something becomes institutionalized, Okay. Um, look this way. Okay. Um, the question was about the Kanakin Jata and how it formed then and how it is today. The things around Pai Sabranti Singh were known as the Nirban Kirtani Jatha or also as the Akhan Kirtani Jatha. They were understood to be Ashiks of Gurbani, Kirtan, Akhan Part Sabs. After Pai Sabs release from prison, uh, that group began to slowly grow and smagams, regular smagams, began to be held in different cities. Uh, Delhi smagam, and of course, uh, the Gurpa Guru Gobind Singh Ji smagam, Ludhiana. With time, these smagams have become institutions, and the Akhan Kirtani Jatha has also become not just a, a local phenomenon, but an international established Jathe Bandi. The inspiration remains by Asab's uh, Kirtan, but what we see more and more today is that many of the youth have not even read Paisab's books, which is really sad. Uh, the Kirtan style of the Jatha is slowly also changing, and if we ask some of the elderly Gosiks, they will tell us that the emotion and the vibe surrounding Smagams is also changing over the years. Uh, so the Akhan Kirtani Jatha uh, continues to be inspired by Paisab's Jeevani, but I think 
it's important that it continues to reconnect with its roots, to reconnect with uh, the spiritual inspiration uh, that Paisa has left in his books uh, and the wrath that he has uh, outlined as being not optional but essential. And can you tell us a bit about the work that you do as a lawyer and how you've received inspiration from Paisa to do the work that you do today? So I am legal counsel with the World Sikh Organization of Canada, which is a national Canadian human rights group. My work surrounds uh, awareness issues about the Sikh faith, but also fighting legal cases when things uh, go wrong with the accommodation of the Kripan or the Bistar or other Sikh articles of faith. I keep a distinct identity. Uh, I wear the color blue quite often try and keep as much at as I can uh, and often uh, I am encountered with questions like why do you eat from Saudi Law and quest those questions turn into discussions about my inspiration which is Paisab and Thi Singh. Uh, so what I got from Paisab's life that was most inspirational to me was his concern with the greater bunt, his concern with making a difference not just for himself, but for other six. And I firmly believe that as good six who practice that, who have the power of Gurbani to support us, we are given opportunities to make a difference for the Panth. And we have an obligation to serve the Panth, as well as continue, continue our own spiritual growth. So Paisa's life is inspirational to me in that way. But overall, I'm always going back to Paisal's writings uh, to serve as an inspiration personally, but also to solve problems uh, as they occur or to explain Gursiki to others, not just in the Sikh community, but in the mainstream. Thank you. Thanks.